everybody, Professor Kim here in my game's basement. Thank you so much for tuning in for yet another installment of Board Games in the Classroom. My goal with this series is to empower teachers who have students from elementary age all the way to college and to bring board games into the classroom as a learning device. My personal history is that I taught college for nearly 15 years and my classes were in the English and composition and uh, humanities vein. That doesn't mean those are the only skills that I will bring to the table with this series. Please keep track of my videos and you'll find some that might help you if you're an instructor in science, math, and the social sciences. Make sure that you pay attention to the timing of my video. I always include a student tutorial or prep session for students about halfway through the video. And I also provide the instructor hands-on advice and suggestions for prepping the students, teaching the students, and then having a meaningful reflection afterwards that takes place as a discussion or a free write. Hi instructor and thank you so much for giving Concept a chance. This is my game for this session. Concept teaches organization, structure, and logic. I have used this game endless amounts of times in my classroom. Composition for the most part. Uh, it teaches students structure in that your major concept is represented by this green question mark, and I teach this as a thesis statement. This is your major point that you're trying to make. It is a, a category of some kind that helps uh, guessers figure out what you're talking about, and you have to get them in the ballpark with this major concept. Then you have these supporting points. These are ideas, description, further information that help the clue giver get the guesser to guess what they're talking about. It just further describes their major concept. So that's what these tokens are for. And then lastly, you have smaller cubes. These are color coded to go with the ideas, all five of the major tokens, even the concept token. And these can help further define and describe the concept. So I have thesis statement, supporting points, and then evidence. This game is fantastic for organization, structure, and logic because you have to think clearly to give someone clues to guess your particular concept. What students will do is they will draw a card from the deck, they'll look at it and see that there are three sections. There's a blue, easy section, a red, medium section, and then a black or gray that is a difficult section. I always suggest for students to pick something from the blue section, which is the easy section, first. It gives confidence to students when they pick something that might be a little easier, but they're still getting to know the board and getting to know where everything is. And players who are guessing are still kind of unsure about what the game is and what you can do and what you can't do. So picking something easy gives everyone a big boost of confidence. I've seen students who pick the super hard one and they're really disappointed when people can't get it and then people who don't guess it feel bad. So just suggest and encourage people to pick from that top row. For example, I'm gonna pick Wasp. What I'm going to do with that is I'm going to pick my major category. A wasp is a, an insect, but on the board, one of the only things that you can see uh, that would fit insect is this animal category. I'm going to put it in the animal category up here, and then I'm going to use my second uh, my secondary pieces, and I'm going to put them in different places that describe my wasp. One of the things is that it flies. So I'm going to put one of my markers here on the flying vehicles like planes and helicopters. The next thing I'm going to do is put this on maybe color. I think wasps are black and yellow. I'm going to try that. Put that here so I have yellow and I have black. 
my blue markers match each other so the colors go together. This one I'm going to put on size because I want them to know that my creature's really small. This one says that things are short, and then the one below it says that things are skinny. So it's really small. Hopefully they see that it's going to be really small. And then lastly, I'm going to put this on the skull face, and then a matching color with that yellow, I'm going to put on the sad face because usually we find that wasp stings hurt, that they could be potentially um, dangerous because uh, people are allergic to them. I'm putting all of these tokens out as I think of them. Students are guessing constantly. The second the player, the clue giver, puts down the major concept, people should be guessing. Encourage people to talk out loud, to share their ideas. If the clue giver thinks that people are on the right track or they say something that's helpful, they can say yes. They're not allowed to say no, and they're not allowed to make facial expressions or gestures that give helpful information otherwise. Once someone guesses wasp, I say that's it, turn it over, and we're good. This game comes with these light bulbs. Um, they are points. I don't play with points. When students find these in the box by accident, they ask me what they are, and I go, they're nothing, you saw nothing. <laughs> because points don't matter. This game isn't about winning points. It's not about guessing it right every time. It's about collaborating together, particularly if you want to work in a team. Let's say I don't want to do the wasp by myself. I can grab a buddy and we can both be working to give clues to our fellow peers. That's okay. So you can have collaboration. If you are guessing, everyone's guessing at the same time and running off of, oh, that's a good idea, or I want to take, or let's go this direction. That's what this game is about. It is a real time guessing game. If I think that maybe a clue I gave was bad, because I hear people talking, I can take that clue away. And what that tells people is stop going down that path. So this real-time reaction, the clue giver's listening, everyone's guessing, and you're moving closer and closer to the right answer, hopefully. The rounds are pretty quick. If you see that students are maybe struggling, try to help them, look at their card and make sure that they've got the right major category for their concept, which is the green question mark. And then maybe give it another minute or two and say, oh, we didn't get it this time, maybe next time, and then move on. Because when the game lags too much and people are guessing and they're not getting it right, they can maybe get into this frustration um, space. So just make sure that you move the game along. You might or might not have enough time to get the second piece in, which is the reflection through either discussion or a, uh, a short self um, uh, a short write that they do individually, um, but definitely don't leave out that reflection piece. But I would suggest giving students an ample amount of time to explore the game and to give at least everybody in that group a chance to be the clue giver once. And my class sessions haven't been more than 50 to 60 minutes. And if I set the game up, talk about the game, they play, uh, that really takes up most of the time. I sometimes like to wait till the next day or the next time we meet to have that discussion because it gives them a chance to take that experience with them and they really do think about it. They mull it over. They spend time thinking about it. They come back the next day and they say, what was that game again? I really want to play that with my family. I couldn't stop talking about it at dinner last night. So they really do think about this. And your reflection questions could be any number of things. I would suggest maybe asking them, what was the most challenging thing for you as a clue giver? What was the most challenging thing for you as a guesser? Maybe then ask, what did you do well? As the clue giver, what one move did you make that you felt particularly proud of? Questions like that, that get them thinking, you can either do it as a class discussion where everyone's contributing equally and you're really um, bouncing off ideas from student to student, or you can make this a five to 10 minute short write where they reflect and then turn that into you. That reflection piece, again, very important. I think that might be all for you to successfully teach this game concept in your classroom. 
I do hope you're successful and I hope you have fun with this because the more fun you have and the more fun you have teaching it, the students will really appreciate it. Professor Kim here. I've got a great game that will exercise your logic, organization, and structure skills. That game is concept. What's concept? Let me teach it to you. A player will draw a card from the top of the stack, take a look at the choices, select one of the concepts, and then they are responsible for representing that concept on the board. As you notice, the board is full of icons and images. It has no language. There are no words in this game. The clue giver is not allowed to actually talk to the players either. It is the peers and everyone else who's playing the game. It is their responsibility to try to guess what the clue giver is representing on this board. How does the clue giver do that? They will use this major concept token. This is the green question mark. This categorizes that clue giver's concept. Think of this like a thesis statement for a paper. It is your overall point that you are trying to make. This major category can represent things like people, nature, animals, books and music and movies, all sorts of things. So definitely take a minute to look at how the board is categorized so that you can identify the best major category for your concept. Then the clue giver will use these four stands, black, blue, red, and yellow to further describe and define their concept. Those are what I call supporting points. Every paper has paragraphs and paragraphs have their own ideas and each one of those ideas is significant and unique. That's what these supporting points are. They describe the color of your concept, the shape of your concept, the size, if it's related to the weather or the elements or technology or medicine or body parts. This is the small stuff. You have a bunch of color cubes that match these stands and these are to further describe this information, this is what I call evidence. You can use as many of these cubes as you'd like on any of these spaces, as long as you have organized your thoughts very clearly using these colored stands. For example, if I wanna use this stand to describe my concept as having more than one color, I need more than one stand. I use this stand to represent the color, and then I find the same matching colored cubes to put it on other colors that also represent my concept. They all go together because they are using the same color. The great thing about concept is that you can actively revise your choices as you make them. You can simply move it, take it away, adjust it, and change your organization as you build your concept through these visual icons. Your instructor will be in the classroom to help you as you play concept, so please feel comfortable asking for help. So I flipped over my card and I take a look at it secretly and I decide I want to pick wasp. I'm going to place my green marker here on the animal icon because insects fit most closely with animals. Then I want to show that my animal is a flying creature. I'm going to place my second stand right here next to the helicopter and the airplane, hoping to show that my main concept is a creature that flies. Next, I want to describe the color. And my wasp, I'm going to keep the same color here, this blue token, and I'm going to put those on black, and I'm going to put that on yellow so that people will think wasps, bees, yellow jackets, anything like that. To show that it's really particularly deadly or dangerous, I'm going to put that here on the skull. We see that danger with the red. We also can see that it makes us really unhappy. I've got my matching colors here with my skull and then my sad face. Next, I'm going to show that it's really small. 
And to do that, I might grab a whole bunch of cubes because I want everyone to know how teeny tiny it is. And so I just can put a bunch of cubes on the short and the skinny. And that means that it is a really small little guy. Hopefully by this point, everyone has guessed wasp. And if someone yells it out, then I say that's it. And the next person's going to go, we'll clear the board, and then the new person will draw their card, take a look at it, and then go from there. Hi students, thank you for giving concept a try. I think you're gonna benefit greatly from rethinking how you organize your thoughts and how you present your thoughts to your fellow students. So one thing I wanted to suggest is check out the guide that the game includes for what the icons are trying to do. Just don't get lost in it. Another thing is that you should be guessing the entire time. Once uh, someone starts putting clues out on the board, just be guessing you're going to give other people ideas. So talk out loud, be verbal, guess the whole time. They can say yes if you are going in the right direction or you make a guess that is close. So listen for them to say yes. Also pay attention if they start taking away or moving around the cubes or the tokens. You can work in teams if you'd like to. This is a collaborative game, which means as a clue giver, you can work alone or you can work with a partner. The whole point here is to work together, to listen to each other, and to think about how we structure our thoughts. So make sure that you're trying to think clearly, you're trying to think logically. The major concept is the green question mark. Think of it like your thesis statement. The four colored tokens uh, are supporting points and those are underlying descriptions or definitions or further information that helps clarify your concept, which is the green one. And then lastly, you have all these little cubes. Make sure you match the colors to each other. If you just throw out colors and tokens willy-nilly, we are not necessarily going to get to the place that you want us to get. And we may not actually guess your concept because everything is a little disorganized. Have fun. No one is grading you and there's absolutely no judgment here. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned a lot about the game and also how to bring it into your classroom successfully. One of the things I would like to suggest is that maybe at a later date, in a week or two or three, bring this game back into your classroom and you're going to find that your students are really excited to jump in and play the game because they know the rules and they feel more confident playing. You also will get successful uh, returns when you bring the game back. Again, students just feel confident. They kind of relax a little. They have a little bit more fun. And if there's a student that missed the first day, you will find that all of your students become teachers at that point. They are so excited to share this knowledge about how to play this game with their fellow students. And you could honestly ask for nothing more than having your students learn something, internalize it, have fun with it, and then share it with someone else. I hope you enjoyed watching my Board Games in the Classroom series with me, Professor Kim. I also hope you discovered the learning opportunities in bringing board games into your classroom. Learning should be fun and it should be hands-on. Definitely check out my archive tutorial videos and click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching!